The Civil War resulted in countless families, north and south, being separated by the call to arms. Fathers, sons, husbands, and other loved ones joined the warring armies by the thousands, leaving at home their wives, children, and many others of their extended families. It could take months, if not years, before the soldiers in blue and gray would be reunited with the folks back home. On a rare occasion, when the business of war brought a soldier near home, the temptation to steal away from duty for a few hours was just too much to ignore. In the ranks, the absence was known as a French leave. If caught away without permission, military discipline could be severe. Just after the Battle of Gettysburg, Samuel Cormany, a Union private in the 16th Pennsylvania Cavalry, made a surprise visit to his nearby home in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, to visit his wife, Rachel, and his daughter, Cora. Samuel was born on a farm in the area of Chambersburg some 25 years earlier. Rachel was a native of Canada. The pair were married in 1860 and lived in Canada when the war broke out. Returning to the States in 1862 with daughter Cora in tow, Samuel Cormany decided to enlist in the Army, joining Company I of the 16th Pennsylvania Cavalry in September 1862. The Cormany family was separated by war as Sam joined his fellow troopers at the front. By 1863, Samuel was an experienced and seasoned cavalryman. As the armies moved northward into Pennsylvania, Cormany soon found himself defending his native state. Like many soldiers, Private Cormany kept a diary and noted his experiences in the Battle of Gettysburg. We were roused early and were soon off with the brigade and took Rebel General Stewart by surprise on the right and rear of the army line, where Stewart was expected to at least annoy the rear of General Meade. While our mounted men were paying attention to General Stewart, we fellows had our horses cared for and were marched down on the right of the main line to occupy a gap and do some sharpshooting at long range with our carbines. We soon attracted attention, and later, an occasional shell fell conspicuously close. On the next day, July 3, 1863, Cormany was near the fighting on skirmish duty with the 16th Pennsylvania Cavalry. He recalled the sounds and sights of the bombardment that preceded Pickett's charge. That evening, Sam penned in his diary, Cannonading commenced early, and battle was on again in full intensity. At 10 o'clock, we were ordered to the front and center, but immediately removed to the right of the center. Had some pretty lively skirmishing. Our squadron almost ran into a rebel battery with a brigade of cavalry maneuvering in the woods. They didn't want to see us, but moved leftward, and we held the woods all evening. All seemed rather quiet for several hours. From 1.30 till 4 p.m., there was the heaviest cannonading I have ever heard. One constant roar with rising and falling inflections. Our boys opening 54 guns at the same time on the rebel lines and works from a little conical hill, Cemetery Ridge. We were picketing in the rear and on the right of it. Many shells came our way, some really quite near but it was wonderful how few really made our acquaintance. General Lee had hoped for success on July 3rd. After the attack failed to dislodge General George Meade's federal forces from Cemetery Ridge, he retreated from the battlefield late on July 4th. Samuel Cormany and his regiment were soon sent in pursuit of Lee's retreating column. 
and by July 6th near Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. This was Cormany's hometown and the residence of his wife and daughter. Trooper Cormany took French leave and paid them a surprise visit. Monday, July 6th. We took up the march via Fayetteville for Quincy. I told Corporal Metz I intended going to Chambersburg to see wife and baby and would report in the morning again. He understood and I slipped away and was soon making for home. As I struck the edge of town, I was told, the rebel rear guard had just left the diamond. So I ventured out 2nd Street and ventured to Street Main. And behold, they were at the door. It was a surprise and delight to meet after the awful battle they had been listening to for passing days. To attempt to describe my joy and feelings at meeting and greeting my dear little family must prove a failure. We spent the p.m. and the evening very sweetly and pleasantly. Samuel's wife, Rachel, also kept a wartime diary. In it, she recorded the moment that her beloved husband rode up to the door. I was sitting reading, Cora playing by my side, when little Willie Wampler came running as fast as he could to tell me a soldier had come up to see me. And sure enough, when I got to the door, Mr. Cormany just rode up. I was so very glad to see him that I scarcely knew how to act. Private Cormany spent the night with his family, but could stay no longer. At 7 o'clock in the morning the next day, he left in search of his regiment. After finding it, he spent time to reflect on his visit from home by recording it in his diary. Now that I have again seen my dearest ones on earth, have loved and caressed them profusely, soldiering seems almost a new thing again and altogether desirable, since country, home, and dear ones must be defended. Rachel, of course, hated to see her Samuel leave, lamenting in her diary, Mr. C is gone again. I can hardly stay in. I feel so lonely. Although brief, the reunion had been a pleasant one for Rachel, Samuel, and little Cora. Samuel went back to the fighting and Rachel to her life in Chambersburg. That wonderful day in July, 1863, would long be remembered as a bright spot in the lives of the young couple torn apart by war.